Welcome to our tip-off show from Mama Lucia's and uh, joined by the head coach of the women's basketball program, Megan Jebby, and of course the director of athletics at American University, Dr. Billy Walker. And of course, before we jump into the hoops component, the fall season is starting to wind down. What are some of the positives that you've seen, Dr. Walker, from that? Yeah, Dan. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. So give yourself a hand. This is, uh, this is fantastic. Thanks. Um, no, this is great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, fall season's winding down. Um, we've uh, had some little mixed bag. You know, some uh, some programs had, had had a great fall. Uh, field hockey had a really good uh, a, a good run, but uh, came up short in the uh, in the semifinals of the Patriot League. Volleyball still got one more weekend this weekend, and then uh, with the hopes to be hosting, we're in first place right now. Hopefully, we'll be uh, hosting the pa Patriot League championships uh, right back in Bender Arena where. Where it belongs every year, eh? So uh, that's that's the plan, right? So, so yeah. And uh, cross country, uh, men's and women's both are at the NCAA regionals this weekend. So um, a lot happening with the fall postseason, uh, as well as obviously uh, winter sports uh, kicking off last week and this week as well. Now, one of the other big changes uh, leading into this season uh, is the fact that there's a new president on campus. Yeah, uh, President Burwell, she's fantastic. Uh, we're, she's a, a big supporter of athletics, and uh, I know everybody knows about uh, about her resume and her past, and she's had uh, some tremendously uh, responsible jobs, you know, and uh, and we're very, very fortunate to be able to get her uh, on board to, to lead uh, American University to the to the next level. We're, we're excited about her, and, um, and hopefully uh, you'll see her around a lot. Uh, her and her, uh, her husband and, and two young children, we'll see them at a lot of events, and we're excited to, to welcome her to the family. I'm sure we will. And, uh, of course, this being the basketball show, let's start talking a little basketball, shall we? Um, you guys last year finished fourth in the league, 11-7 and seven record. Had a pretty good season, but, of course, you're looking to bank off that from last year. Where do you see this year's team entering the campaign? Well, Dan, I think... We're excited about where we were seated. I think, you know, anytime you take the pressure off and you're not first <laughs> is a good thing to have. So I thought we would be picked in the in the top three and we picked third. So that makes sense to me, um, especially since we didn't finish the way we'd like to finish last year. Um, but we have almost everybody back. Um, we lost one uh, starter from the team. And, you know, I just feel like we're, we're – starting to click on on most of our cylinders maybe not quite completely there but i think that they feel confident in themselves this year and it's a different group they're playing like they know what they should be doing and that's really really nice as a coach to know that there's you don't have to teach as many little details um and it's nice for us so yeah and dr walker when you take a look at what coach jebby has done she's been here four years this is her fifth year and what she's meant to the program and the department as a whole yeah i, I think uh, anybody that's been around the department know knows how important uh, Coach Jebby is to our to our department and to our program overall. Um, Megan and Mike both, uh, all three of us, got here really at the same time. It's amazing that we're starting our fifth year. It seems crazy. It seems like we just got here. But uh, but uh, Megan's got a fantastic staff, um, the kids on the team. They have a, they're very cohesive. It's a great group of young ladies, and uh, you can tell when we have recruits in. That's one of the things we hear the most is that they love the way the staff gets along and works together and works hard. Um, and, and the team as a whole. Not to mention she's great, the X's and O's as well. So we'll take a time out. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the X's and O's, go over the roster, the schedule, all of that as we continue on the tip-off show from Mama Lucia's. Welcome to our sleepy little college town. You may have heard of us. Here we stand up for causes as naturally as we sit down for classes. We believe that knowledge, understanding, and discovery will make the world a better place and that our contributions are only limited by our imaginations. Words, medals, and degrees don't make us who we are. Meaningful change does. We are American. And there's nothing we would rather be. And welcome back to Mama Lucia's, to our tip-off show, uh, focusing on women's basketball, head coach Megan Jebbia. And, you know, you, you take a look. We were just talking some about the uh, the preseason component of you guys being third in the Patriot League. And, you know, you look at the, the roster and you look at, you know, the returning players you guys have. Was there any – were they upset at all that nobody was on the preseason uh, docket on the number one list? At least I hope so. I don't, I, I don't know if they were, but I hope so. Um, I think Emily Kinniston kind of deserved to be on preseason first team. And you know, she led us in scoring. She was on all defensive team last year. 
and she was second team all Patriot League. And I just think they're overlooking her a little bit. Um, when you look at who was on first team this year, it's four post players and one guard. So, I mean, for her, she just has to sit there and, and compete with that one person, you know, a, a night in and night out and, and earn her keep. But she definitely has the ability to be a first teamer for us. And I think we actually have two on our team this year. And it depends on how they perform in the Patriot League. They have to stay healthy. Uh, I think that's a big part of it. And Emily wasn't healthy towards the end of the season. So I'm sure that hurt her a little bit. Um, she didn't finish like she wanted to, and we didn't finish like we wanted to. But, you know, I think there's there's some things there that she's she's looking at and she's striving for every day. What does she mean from the leadership component, back and as successful as she has been? Um, everything. I think, you know, she's a quiet leader. Um, she would like to tell you that she leads by example, and she does with her everyday effort and practice. But I think she's starting to become more of a vocal leader now, and she sees things and she's speaking up because I think she knows this is it for her. And I, lo I love seeing the evolution of players throughout their career because as a freshman, I mean, we were just talking about in the office earlier, she was just a three-point shooter when she first got here and how she's evolved into this playmaker that um, really starts our offense and defense. I mean, she's, she was on defensive team last year. So we rely heavily on her. And um, the more she can voice her opinion and the things that she sees and that we can change on the run and uh, without having to call timeouts, I think the better we'll, off we'll be for the future. When you started practice up until where you are now, what do you see as the biggest improvements that the team has made? Well, I mean, we came into the year saying there was three things that we were looking at. We had to be a better three-point shooting team. We had to get to the line more, and we had to rebound better, um, which are big things when you think about them. But we're very capable of doing them, and it's just focusing on them and trying to do it more every day. And I think we are we, – we, we stat every practice. So every practice we look at – how we're shooting the ball. And our three-point shooting is better than it was last year, so that's a plus. Um, you know, we've only had two scrimmages, so it's hard to say where we'll be um, with the rebounding aspect. Of, I think it depends on the opponent that you're playing. Um, but we do, we've worked on a lot of rebounding things, um, for half court, full court, so I think that's helping. Um, and then, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll see, Dan. <laughs> the biggest thing that you want to see, I mean, granted, we only have a, a few days before the uh, start of the season, but you want to see in the start of the season and the non-conference schedule, you want to see the team get better at. Yeah, well, I, I think it's just the cohesion and figuring out how, you know, you need seven or eight to really play well together. And I think right now we have about seven and we need that eighth. And who is that eighth person going to be? Is it going to be a guard? Is it going to be a post? And, you know, we keep going back and forth. I think it depends on the day. And um, I think, you know, if we can get that eighth component, that eighth, eighth person who, you know, it doesn't matter who gets in foul trouble, you take them out and we don't lose anything, um, that will be helpful for us. So, and it's, it's a crapshoot right now. We're not really sure. Um, and I think this, that's what the non-conference is for. It's to figure out who your solid core is going into the conference play. And we're getting there. It's just We're just not there yet. <laughs> and we talked about the, the non-conference slate. You have Penn State at home. You, mm -hmm. You're staying local for a couple games. GW, George Mason, uh, get a chance to go to Tulsa to open up the season. What do you see when you just take a look at that non-conference slate? I think, I, I mean, this is probably one of the easier schedules I've put together for non-conference, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think either any of our games could go either way. I mean, last year at Penn State, we lost by five, and we were right in the game with two minutes to go. And I think that surprised some people, and I think it surprised us <laughs> as a core. But, um, you know, it's it's a solid schedule, and we're playing teams in Atlantic 10 and the American and the Colonial and things like that, and obviously the Big Ten. So, um, I'm excited for it because, you know, you could end up with a great non-conference record or a 500 year that will tell me a lot going into the Patriot League, or it could be what we've been, which has been, we're right there, but we haven't been able to jump that hurdle of winning some of the close games that we've lost. And uh, best of luck as the season gets going at Tulsa and then home mm -hmm. against uh, LaSalle on Monday. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. And to grab your tickets, log on to aueagles.com and that'll do it for this part of our tip-off show from Mama Lucia's. Thank you.